We know that qualitative risk heat maps are very poor tools for conducting consistent risk analysis. Here, we justify why we do not use them as an adequate project risk management methodology. Heat maps pretend that there's no knowledge on which to base your decisions. Those who defend them justify themselves by mentioning phrases like, risk management is more of an art than a science. This is done by choice or disdain. There's already too much science accumulated over centuries about how to use information and quantify it to make decisions. The perceived benefit of risk matrices is their simplicity. They are supposedly easy to build, easy to explain, and easy to score. They can even appear authoritative and intellectually rigorous. However, the development of risk matrices has been done completely in isolation from academic research on decision making and risk management. Rigorous research has been done on this, compiling dozens of qualitative methodologies. These investigations always conclude that risk matrices produce arbitrary risk management decisions and actions. These problems cannot be overcome because they are inherent in the structure of risk matrices. Time and time again, Truly scientific development recommends that professionals rely on analytical risk and decision methods based on more than 300 years of scientific thinking and evidence, that is, quantifying risks based on probabilistic methods. Models are used everywhere, from anthropology to zoology, but not in qualitative risk management. The science of this is clear. We do much better when we use formal models. The most recent evidence of this is the work of Philip Tetlock, his book, Super Forecasting, The Art and Science of Prediction. We don't learn anything by using hazard maps. They do not inform the decision-making process, nor do they justify retrospectively the decisions we have already made, consciously or unconsciously. Instead, a good model that forces us to think about the assumptions help us overcome our biases and preconceived notions. The other value of models is how risk analysis is transformed from an endless debate of people in entrenched positions talking to each other when using qualitative methodologies, to a true collaboration where people work together to find the best data and the best way to use them. When we choose a range of probability or severity in a risk matrix, does anyone ask how confident we are in that choice? With each qualitative risk analysis, it is assumed that you have the same confidence in the estimates. That just doesn't make sense. Nor is it that this point is very relevant, since what follows in the risk matrices is the apparent use of mathematics that adds a false sense of authority when in reality all the arithmetic use is arbitrary, subjective, and weak. On the other hand, when using heat maps, estimates are made based on singular data points such as a particular single event and not on the full range of events of probable loss or severity. In this methodology, there's no single risk management procedure that really explains what scenario you're thinking about when choosing a pretty fine range in a risk matrix. Best case, most probable case, worst case. Again, it's not that it's very relevant either, because whatever scenario is chosen all other likely events will still be ignored. Qualitative risk management pretends that the experts are infallible. In contrast, quantitative risk management knows the limitations of the judgments of the experts in the field and chooses to compensate for this by means of mitigating and increasing the value judgments specified by the experts. This is perhaps the most obvious of the weaknesses of risk heat maps. But in the long run, it's just a case of the very first thing we mentioned, deliberate ignorance. There's no shortage of research on how our choices in scale design impact the outcome. In contrast, quantitative risk management does not use scales. Once multiple risks fall into the same category, for example, high probability and medium impact, there's no further way to differentiate between the severity of the risks and there's no way to determine which risks should be treated first. Once again, a case of deliberate ignorance. The rationality of the human being has its limitations, and this has been demonstrated ad nauseum by cognitive theory. 
Qualitative risk management opts for such limits. Quantitative risk management recognizes itself as a decision-making discipline and welcomes contributions from other domains. Behavioral economics is one of those domains. Important contributions worth two Nobel Prizes have been made in this field. Heat maps do not value benefiting from this knowledge. Heat maps do not offer any meaningful way to add risk. Companies are interested in understanding the total risks of a business, a project, or an asset not each risk individually. Heat maps create an illusion that risks are being communicated. In contrast, quantitative risk management is transparent. It does not obscure. It does not hide anything from the decision makers. Risk analysis using heat maps generally ends with two recommendations, one to do nothing and the other to do something. The risk analyst's hunch Knowing what is best for the business has already directed the analysis in one of these two directions. Suppose she is using heat maps and is actually suggesting multiple alternative mitigation options. How does the heat map help us make a decision about which is the best option? You can't do it. Quantitative risk management provides a clear guidance on what costs are or not justified. With heat maps, you can only do a few basic what-if scenarios to see if we should focus on reducing probability or impact. Of course, risk is also a function of other variables. And here, quantitative risk management and sensitivity analysis shine. As we will see later, it is easy to perform a sensitivity analysis and use tornado charts to drive the specific risk mitigation strategy. Qualitative risk management has a feeling that anyone can do it. It does not matter if we do things that are poorly documented in some procedure or not. Therefore, prior knowledge and skills may not appear to be relevant when using heat maps. In contrast, quantitative risk management values critical thinking, understanding basic probability theory, building calibrated estimates, behavioral economics, understanding data quality, and much more. A wide range of skills are valued. And as we will see introductorily in this course, none of them are complicated or difficult to master. You can't manage what you can't measure. Peter Drucker, what else needs to be mentioned? Since no metrics are produced during analysis, qualitative risk analysis depends solely on the perception of the assessor. Since it does not have a cost or duration analysis, Qualitative risk analysis does not include calculating how much it will cost or how long it will take an organization in risk management activities and responses to risk.